Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and today I want to talk about properly balancing your gimbal head. In my experience, and from what I've observed in the field, about 100% of photographers think they have this figured out, but well over half of them are actually wrong. Now how can you tell if your gimbal is properly balanced? Easy, a properly balanced gimbal head will allow you to point the lens in any direction, and this is the important part, when you let go of the lens, it will stay pointed in that direction, even with all the knobs still loose. However, that's not how most people have it set. Most people have it set like this. I have mine improperly set right now, and if you notice, when I let go of the camera, the lens drops or comes back up, and that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be when I let go of the camera, it stays in the direction it's pointed, not flopping around like that. Now I know that some will argue that maybe it's not a big deal if it's not properly balanced, but the thing is, it really makes a difference on the usability end. A properly balanced gimbal is far easier to use than when you have to constantly fight in order to maintain position. Plus, it's way faster. Now one example that comes to mind is if you have a bird on a limb and you want to keep the camera on it. Maybe the bird has his back to you at the moment and you're waiting for him to turn around. With an unbalanced gimbal head, you have to keep the camera in position with your hands. If you let go, the lens drops and you have to find the bird again in the viewfinder, possibly missing the shot. However, with a properly balanced gimbal, you just point at the bird, let go, and the camera stays where it was pointed, making it easy to be prepared for as long as it takes. It seems subtle, but I can tell you that once you get accustomed to a properly balanced gimbal, it'll drive you absolutely nuts when it's not balanced right. Also, a properly balanced gimbal head is more stable than one that's not set up right. The thing is, when you have to exert even minimal effort to keep the camera in place, you become part of the support system and can actually make things less stable. A properly balanced setup allows you to let the tripod and the head do all the work. All you need to do is point the camera as needed and fire off the shutter. Okay, so let's go over exactly how to set this up. We'll be using my Wimberly WH200 gimbal head and really right stuff quick release clamp for this demo, but it should work the same regardless of the brand. I'll be balancing my D5 and 600 F4E. But first, a couple of quick setup notes. In some cases, you won't be able to perfectly balance a setup, especially if it's a small camera on a large lens. Sure, you can move the foot back in the clamp, but you don't want to mount too far back or you risk the clamp not holding securely to the lens. Plus, if you use the safety pins in your clamps like I do, you can only go back so far. My solution is to put a battery grip on the camera and that has always balanced everything out for me. You can also just add some weight to the camera with maybe some washers and a quarter 20 bolt too if you like. Finally, you could also try a longer quick release foot, but keep in mind that if you go too far, the foot may bang into the tripod when you want to point upwards. The second note is about zoom lenses that change physical length as you zoom. This throws off the balance and can make it difficult to have perfect balance all the time. While I can't beat the physics of it, I do have a suggestion. I typically zoom my lens out to the middle of the range I anticipate using and I balance it from there. It's not perfect, but it works well most of the time. Okay, enough talk, let's set this up. So our first step with this is actually to drop our control here all the way to the bottom if it's not. So if you have your control up here, just loosen that up, bring it all the way to the bottom. Next we're going to come to the front and we have the mount for our foot and this is the part everyone kind of knows how to do. Basically what we want to do is balance this on the foot so that it's not flopping around like this. We don't want it to, we want it so that when we let go, it stays balanced and there's no movement. And we want to have roughly equal movement when we go from one direction to the other so that, you know, it's more or less balanced on our foot. Now we can tweak this in a little bit if we need to, but right now we just need to get this nice and balanced. I'm pretty close right here. I'm looking at my rate of fall here and they're, they're pretty close. I could probably even go back a hair bit more so that they're pretty close to even. My tripod is a little bit stiff, so sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell, but as long as you're balanced on here, you kind of get the idea how to do that. The next step though, that's the critical one, and that's balancing this little guy right here. So this is our second control, and this is the one that we're actually the most worried about. This is the one that's gonna allow us to let go of that camera and have it not flopping around. So when we get that set, this won't happen anymore, that movement you see right there. Now, there is a trick to setting this, and generally speaking, if you can line up the center of the little 
knob right here with the center of your lens, it's not always perfect, but it's gonna get you in that ballpark there. So I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit so it looks pretty close to me. And I'll lock that down. And let's take a look. If I bring it down, does it stay? No, it's slow. Not quite there yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to adjust it. I'll loosen this again and I'll bring it up just a little bit higher. And I'll take a look, another look. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I still have a little bit of movement. I'm gonna move it one more time. I may have gone too far there, we'll take a look. Let's see, that's holding, that's holding. Nope, I think I have it. So now, anytime I point the lens, I can let go and it will not move around anymore and that's the point and that's what we're after. So just basically small little movements here and start with the center of this with the center of your lens and then just do, gradually move that up until you have the kind of balance that I'm showing you here. Of course, once this is set up, things can change. Maybe you have a different body that weighs more or less than the camera you originally set up with. Maybe you add a teleconverter and that throws off the balance a bit. Maybe the lens hood is not attached one time when you're using it. What I found is that in most instances, minor weight distribution changes like that only require adjustment to balance at the foot. Usually you don't have to worry about tweaking the vertical adjustment. The only time I find myself rebalancing the vertical adjustment is when I use a different lens, and even then, it's not every time. It depends on the setup, of course. So there you have it. It's pretty easy, and I promise you a well-balanced gimbal head is well worth the effort. Of course, this works best if you have good long lens technique, and I just so happen to have a video all about that subject. I'll put it on the card above. Also, if you liked this video, you'll love my ebook, Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System, Secrets to Stunning Wildlife Photography, and coming later this year, Secrets to the Nikon Exposure System. All the books are jam packed with hundreds of tips, tricks, and techniques to help you bring your photography to the next level. The books are very good at taking complex topics and making them easy for anyone to understand, so make sure you check them out. Finally, remember to subscribe to my channel and make sure you stop by my site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss an article or a video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.